Okay, so what actually is a coming of age story? Well, if you don't know, Wikipedia actually defines the coming of age story as the growth of a protagonist. But I think that it's more than just that. And this is what I mean. first iconic thing that Casey Neistat always has is those iconic sunglasses. Now, mine actually don't have any of the white, so I'm gonna use white out. I know he doesn't actually use white out, but this is all I have, so yeah. When it comes to a coming of age story, for me at least, what, the first thing that I think of is somebody discovering or realizing the type of person that they actually are. And now you might be wondering, how does one actually do that? How do they come to that point in their life? Well, I think that it's a accumulation of beliefs and events that really define the values that you have in your life going forward. Something that seems more meaningful and more impactful and probably even more relatable is when a character actually, like you can visually see the transformation that they make as a person, as a human being. All right, so far so good. I think that I'm getting the hang of what it looks like. Obviously I'm gonna need to scrape off a lot of this white out because I think I put way too much, but I think I got the general look down. Not that this is difficult or anything like that. All right, I'm pretty much done with the sunglasses. All I need to do is let them dry and then scrape off to just clean up all the edges, make it give it that Casey Neistat look. Okay, so while I'm waiting for the paint to dry, let me be more clear about what I meant by when it comes to discovering what your values are. So let me give you guys an example. When it comes to me, one of the most prominent uh, values that I have is treat others the way that you want to be treated, also known as the golden rule. And I think a really, really clear example of this is when it comes to actually responding to, you know, mean comments that you might get on pictures or for me, YouTube comments. So on one of my more popular videos, right, I basically get this comments from a guy basically calling me a sellout, saying that Logitech sponsored my video, that I was just saying that it was positive because I was getting paid. And at the time I had like 200 or 300 subscribers, so I don't know where he was getting that idea. But nonetheless, he was basically being really insulting because I gave a positive review of a product that I actually liked. My response to this was basically just addressing all of his points in not necessarily a rude way. I didn't want to just insult him back because he was being rude to me. I didn't think that that was the right approach for solving this issue. Instead, I addressed all the points that he made very calmly and I tried to make him understand that that just wasn't the case. I wasn't actually paid by Logitech. Hashtag not sponsored. All right, I'm pretty sure that these glasses are done drying. I mean, it's only white out, so it shouldn't be taking that long. But Casey Neistat uses a popsicle stick to scrape out all of the excess paint. And I don't actually have one. All I have is this. All I have is a guitar pick, so I'm gonna be using that to scrape out all of the excess white out. But the thing about this value of mine that I have is that sometimes it's just not the case. There's always a chance of somebody just rubbing you the wrong way or maybe you have a bad day. And sometimes you can snap at people. And that's extremely evident in the character Blanche. Blanche? Blanche? It's French for white. Um, her character gets really upset at her husband because she finds out that he's a homosexual. And now it's important to mention that this is a completely different time period, but she is so disrespectful and just completely tears her husband apart. And this actually causes her husband to commit suicide, which is really sad to hear. Uh, when I read that in the book, like, I don't know, I just thought that was so messed up because she didn't have to treat him that way. And I think it was the anger that she felt, the hurt that she felt, uh, because she did walk in on him and another man, an older man at that. But nevertheless, the reaction that she had was one that did not help the situation at all. And I think it's important to keep in mind that even though we can try and have these values as much as possible, sometimes there are gonna be times where we just snap. But that doesn't mean that we can't try. And what I mean by that is that there's always opportunities to rethink your decision before you actually say something. So that is one of the values that I have picked up in my coming of age journey. Something that I've just realized over a period of time dealing with people that I don't know or even friends. Okay, so I don't know about you guys, but I think that these turned out pretty good. I mean, come on, that's gotta look legit. Anyways, here's my second value. 
Okay, so the next guiding value or principle or whatever you want to call it is putting forth your best efforts when doing whatever you are passionate about. Now for me, this was starting a YouTube channel and things that I did included watching the greats like Peter McKinnon, obviously Casey Neinstadt, Matt Diavella, and a lot of Final Cut Pro X tutorials. This also goes hand in hand with not only taking inspiration from people that you may look up to, but also becoming a master of the craft and trying to learn those fundamental skills. And a value that is really closely related to this is not giving up when facing an obstacle and finding a different angle of attack. Never giving up is such a huge factor when it comes to going after your passions because you are going to run into obstacles. And the important part to this is never giving up, making sure that you're always trying to make progress because you are going to run into obstacles and you just got to get over those. And that is not a trait that just comes overnight. It takes a long period of time to develop that skill of of not giving up when you come to an obstacle because there are many times where we may procrastinate or we may do something that isn't as important as the task at hand or just simply have inaction like Hamlet. Now, my amazing grade 12 English teacher, she loves to say that Hamlet is not a man of inaction and I do agree with her on that front. However, I think that just because Hamlet isn't a man of inaction does not necessarily mean that he was prioritizing correctly. See, there's a difference between the tasks that he was doing versus the tasks that he should have been doing. He should have been following his father's orders and getting revenge on King Claudius. But instead, he actually procrastinates and takes on other tasks that are not as important as what his father told. And because of that, both King Claudius and Hamlet's plans go unexpected. So while it's a skill that we could definitely all work on, just make sure that you don't give up and you put your best efforts towards the things that you are passionate about. Okay, and the third and final value of mine that I wanna share with you guys is not looking too far into the future. Let me explain. See, the issue that I have with looking into the future is that nobody truly knows what is gonna happen. I mean, nobody knew that there was gonna be a pandemic, but we still have to work with that. And obviously there are people that have it way worse than me. I'm speaking from a very privileged position, but the fact still remains true that we don't know exactly what is gonna happen. And that is why course decisions for me are usually very, very difficult because I don't actually know what I wanna do for the rest of my life. I have interests that come and go. I have seasons where, you know, I'm really focused on one thing and then automatically I'm switching to something completely different and the reason that I say that is because I always want to learn and grow and try out new different things and find new things to work on which is why I love doing the 30-day video challenges so much but without a doubt an extremely important part of the coming-of-age story has to be the people that help you out and the people that influence you well you've grown a lot and you've matured a lot emotionally like, you know, a, you before you were always surface level with everyone, but now you have deeper connections. You were, you're able to like trust people a lot more. And yeah. obviously that's like a mature thing to do because you need to have these um, attachments and you need to have these relationships with people. See, and just like this piece of road here, our journeys can have imperfections as well. Like for me, this is the equivalent of spending hours editing a video and then have it not perform the way that I'd expect. Cause that sucks. See, it can be pretty hard when you edit and you film and you make a video that you think is the perfect video and then it completely flops. And there's a lot of guilt in that because of the amount of time that you spent or maybe you used somebody else's resources. You can just feel very guilty for not being able to produce something that doesn't perform the way that you expected. And this feeling of guilt is similar to the guilt that Dunstan felt in Fifth Business. See, because of the actions that his childhood friend Percy made, he now feels in debt to Mary Dempster because of his involvement with the action. I mean, he is the one that dodged the snowball that was meant for him and it hit this innocent woman. This guilt goes on to plague the rest of Dunstan's life and he never forgets it. Sometimes when you spend a long time working on a project that you think is really good, the guilt that you feel from not having it perform as well as you think it would have, you can use that 
to fuel the next project because you'll remember the things that, hey, maybe this didn't work out. Maybe this part of the video that I added into this video, it just didn't cut it. What I've learned from my coming of age journey is that you can use whatever happened in the past, whatever mistakes that you have made to fuel and to fix the next project going forward. And holy, these mosquitoes are actually killing me. I need to go. So if you were to ask me, do I feel fully in control of my life? I think the pretty obvious answer is no, of course not. But I don't necessarily think that that's a bad thing. See, for instance, sometimes leaving things to chance can actually bring some pretty good things, such as the pirates from Hamlet that bring him back to Denmark just in time for him to fulfill his goal and his mission. Me personally, I just think that there are always positives and negatives. So having all of that said, here's what I've actually learned through my self-realization journey. Number one, you aren't going to learn about who you are just by sitting around. See, for me, it comes down to action, both in the things that I go after and the things that I do, and the way that I react to conflict. And number two is that the coming of age journey never actually stops. I really believe that there are always things that can be learned and that there are always things that can be improved upon. And that's one of the beauties of YouTube and people that have channels because you get a visual representation of their growth and their improvement over a course of time. And just like your own coming of age story could provide you a lot of value, if this video has provided you any value, it would really help my channel if you left a like and even subscribed if you want more videos just like this one. More videos are on the way, so hit the bell icon if you don't want to miss them. I'm Matt, and thanks for watching.